Hey, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. In this programming example, 11.3.4, we will look at an exponential sign sweep for capturing an impulse response of an audio or acoustic system. And specifically, we will examine the noise reduction properties that can be achieved if oversampling is used. A sign sweep is a common method for capturing the IR of an audio device. The idea behind the sign sweep is to continuously drive a device with a sinusoid that changes frequency over time. A sign sweep is defined by its starting and end frequencies, we'll call FA and FB, its duration, we'll call it T, its sample rate, and lastly, the rate of increase of frequency, or sweep rate, L. Therefore, a sign sweep stimulus can be designed to have a large bandwidth and sinusoids innately have low crest factors, about 3 dB, making them an efficient stimulus for bringing almost any device into steady state. Now the rate of increase, L, of a sine sweep can vary. Typical rates are linear, quadratic, and exponential. Sometimes exponential rates are referred to as logarithmic or geometric. The exponential sine sweep perceptually sounds linear, though, to the ear since we hear frequency in ratios of two. And the exponential sign sweep also increases in frequency at the very same clip, according to this ratio of two. Therefore, frequency changes of an octave occur over constant time intervals, such that the duration of time from FA to 2FA is exactly equal to the duration from FB over two to FB. And this ratio holds for every octave span uh, for any frequency within the exponential sine sweep. Now, the IR is obtained by driving a device under test with the exponential sine sweep and some post-processing, which is shown here. More detail is covered in the textbook. Um, this process can be generally described as deconvolution, in which the response is uh, deconvolved with the stimulus, but deconvolution can also be thought of as convolution with the inverse. So this signal down here represents the inverse of this signal up here. And if we convolve the inverse with the response, then we're left with the impulse response. When recording the impulse response of a device under test, it's preferable to reduce the noise that may be recorded by the microphone. Ambient noise can be reduced by taking the recordings in a quiet environment. Further, hardware considerations such as a clean power supply or using balanced analog lines can also reduce unwanted noise. With synchronous averaging of several stimuli, noise can be reduced through the process of averaging. Additionally, with this exponential sign sweep, IR capture technique, and the use of oversampling, the noise floor can be reduced further still. Since the exponential sine sweep has a flat amplitude but spends more time in the low frequencies, then it actually has a pink sloped spectrum with more energy in the low frequencies than high frequencies. To counter this, the inverse signal is shaped to have a low cut, high boost characteristic. But any noise present in the recording Y introduced during the recording will also have a low cut, high boost characteristic. And this crossover point from cut to boost is right at FS over four, right at our half band. Now, if a high enough sampling rate is used, then a significant amount of noise can be removed by low pass filtering above the upper edge of the exponential sign sweep, right at FB. An improvement of 3 dB can be expected for every doubling of FS, as we'll see in this following programming example. So let's consider an exponential sign sweep from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a duration of two seconds, followed by a silent period of 0.1 seconds to allow for the device to ring out. In this simulation, the device will simply be a digital low pass filter with a cutoff of five kilohertz. We will create multiple ESSs, uh, exponential sign sweeps, 
at various commonly used sampling rates, 44.1, 48K, 96K, and 192K. Now, to estimate the noise signal, we will drive the device twice, and each time a new random noise signal will be generated and added to the response. So we are going to create the ESS at our current sample rate using the same edge frequencies in every case, 20 to 20K. Let's start with um, 44.1. Now we are going to generate coefficients at this sample rate with the cutoff of 5K. We're going to save those into our DUT numerator and denominator coefficients. Now we're going to drive the DUT twice. We're going to add random noise each time. So here's our random noise. Um, this is seeded differently every time it's executed. So this will be a different set of random noise. These will not be the same. We're going to produce two outputs, Y1 and Y2. Now, the average of these two responses will give us an estimate of our signal, while the difference of these two responses gives us an estimate of our noise. The RMS of the estimated noise will be retained for each sample rate and compared as a dB ratio against the baseline of 44.1. The exponential sine sweep generation and IR extraction are performed with built-in functions of MATLAB we already saw sweep tone, and to extract the IR, we're going to use um, IMP Z est, so the impulse uh, estimate in the Z domain, in digital, right? So the next step will be to extract. Maybe you want to see these. Let's do it this way. So these look substantially similar with just different uh, noise signals embedded within them. Let's clear that out. Let's plot the extracted impulse responses. Did I not run this? Mm-hmm. Now let's zoom in to take a little look at these. Here is the estimated impulse response of our DUT. In this case, just a simple little Butterworth filter. So next we're going to normalize these. The process of extracting the impulse response actually does not preserve scale. So it's pretty typical when using ESS processing to normalize. Now we're going to low-pass filter these right at FB. So we're going to generate a new low-pass filter at FB, which is our 20K. Now we're going to have to regenerate this every single time we change our sample rate. And we're going to filter both of these impulse responses uh, to remove any noise above 20K. Well, we're stopping at 20K, so that's fine. Let's clear these out and plot again. This will already be zoomed in for us. All right. This is an estimate of our signal. We're taking our two impulse responses and averaging them together. Now, if we want to estimate noise, we'll take our two impulse responses and difference them. And if we were to plot this, we'll see a noise signal. Now, we're going to keep a copy of the RMS of this. So if we take RMS of n, we're going to take that and we're going to preserve it. OK? Whoops, I guess I didn't run this up here. It's just an empty set. But that's OK. We're going to rerun this whole thing 
for uh, all these sample rates. So we're going to preserve that. Then we're going to do, do a DB comparison. We're going to compare each of our sample rates against 44.1. We're going to look at the level of noise remaining uh, inside our impulse response at all of our different sample rates. So let's clear everything out. And let's run this whole thing. Here we have the dB differences in noise floors. This is 48K compared to 44.1, typically about half a dB. Uh, your mileage may vary. Remember, these are random signals. So th these are going to be different from each time you run it. At 96K, down to 44.1, we see an improvement of about 3.5 dB. Now I told you that every time we double, we expect to gain about 3 dB. So 44.1 doubled would give us 88.2. Well, 96K is just a little bit above that, so we see just a little bit above our 3 dB improvement. And then, once we get up to 192, this is just a little bit more than two doublings, so we see uh, more than 6.5 dB observed. So, I hope this satisfies any curiosity about the use of the exponential sign sweep along with oversampling to achieve noise reduction. In the next programming example, which comes from chapter 12, we'll be looking at the discrete Fourier transform. Until then, thanks for watching.